Hello and welcome to our first LEGO train coding tutorial. In this video, we'll explore how you can add a touch of intelligence to your train layouts through some simple programming. I'll guide you through the steps of programming your LEGO trains to stop at specific points and interact with markers on the track. Our starting point is a simple but useful aspect of any layout. We'll program the train to travel between two colored tiles on the track, and we'll use Pybricks for this. Pybricks saves your programs directly on the hub, so you can run your LEGO trains without the need of a constant phone or remote connection. This is not just convenient, but it also ensures your creations run smoothly. Pybricks programs also run a lot faster, so you don't have to worry about missing the markers or other lag. Finally, you can adjust the colors to suit your setup to make your train super reliable. So, if you're ready to add a layer of automation to your LEGO trains, stick around. We'll take you through the steps, one Pybricks block at a time. Let's get started. The setup that you need is pretty simple. All you need is one LEGO train with a city hub and one additional color and distance sensor which will scan the colors on the track. You'll also need some tracks and some colored markers uh, to put on the tracks. For this video, we'll assume that Pybricks is already installed on the hub, so we can just turn on the hub and connect. To make this work, the first thing we'll do is get a measure of what the sensor is really seeing. To do that, we'll make a program that will just display the sensor values that it sees. First, open a new program. The first thing we'll do is set up the sensor. And in my setup, it's connected to port B. The next thing we'll want to do is print out the sensor values. Since we'll be doing that repeatedly, we'll start with a loop. And we'll print that value using the print block. Now this would print data much too fast for us to read, so I'll add a wait block to wait briefly between print statements. Now this is just going to print ABC, so to make sure, let's run this program. And as you can see, it's printing that same value over and over again. In our case though, we want to print what the sensor is seeing. To do that, go to the color sensor block and choose to print not the best matching discrete color, but the actual measurement of U, saturation, and brightness value. And let's run that. As you can see right now, it's printing all sorts of values, which are the values coming from the sensor. So if we move the robot around, for example, if we move the sensor across the red tile on the track, you can see that the U values are approximately 360, which is the value for red. So that sounds right. And the saturation and value are quite high because it's a very bright red color that it sees. Now, we'll just keep this program running so that we can uh, see these values coming in, or we can always run this program again later but we'll use these values in a new program. So let's create another program. And this is going to be the program for the train. And the other program is still open here, so we can be a bit lazy and just copy this block to the other tab. The next thing we'll need to do is tell the sensor exactly what to look for. The default colors that it detects could be different for anybody, so the results aren't great, but instead we'll tell it to look specifically for the colors that we're seeing here. To do that, go to the setup again and take several of these blocks, which lets you set up custom colors. I'll call this one the red tile because that's what we're measuring. And we can just enter the values that we see coming in here. So it's about 356, Saturation is about 96, and the value is about 84. This is the brightness value. And now you can repeat these steps for the other colors that we're interested in. Let's start by adding a few more of these blocks. You can also just copy and paste them. So we have a blue tile. But then we have two more things. The train may also see the tracks, and in my case, the wooden floor. 
And it's important to add these as well so it knows later on which colors not to detect. So these are the ones it's going to be able to tell apart. So first, let's put in the values for the blue tile. As you can see, the U is about 222, saturation is about 92, and the value is about 75. And by the way, to get a sense of what these values mean, you can click on this dialog and, uh, and change, change all these color values. Now we need to color the tracks. Now these values will jump around a bit, but you can roughly take an average. It doesn't matter too much. Let's take about 240. All right, and finally, we have the floor. This jumps around quite a lot as well, but it's close to red in this case. And now finally, we need to tell the sensor to look specifically for those colors. And it probably makes sense to put the colors up there first so we can use them. And then we can click on this arrow to reveal the extra options, which allow you to configure which colors exactly it should look for. In this case, we want the red tile, the blue tile, the tracks, and the floor. And what this does, it will tell the sensor to only look for these colors and ignore everything else. So if it sees orange, for example, it's probably going to round it to red. So you never get false positives. Okay, we have all these values now, so we can just stop this program and start building a program that we need to drive the train. Now, what else do we have? We have a train motor, so let's set it up as well. And this as you can tell by the icon, is one of these motors. Now let's call it train. And it's on port A. And now that all the colors are set up, we're ready to make the main program. Since we'll be driving back and forth constantly between the tiles, we'll start again with a loop block. And we'll start by making the train drive at a given power level. You can pick a value that works well for, for your train. Now, when it's going to drive forward, it's going to have to wait until it sees the red tile. So we'll use a wait until block. And it's going to wait until the color measurement equals red. So we'll take a block to test the quality, which is the logic compare block. In this case, it's configured to test the two values are equal, two numbers, but we'll be using colors. So we'll take the color measurement block and it's going to compare it not to a number, but to a given color. And we want it to wait until it sees the red tile. Notice that we're using the best match for the color here rather than the raw measurement we were using before, because now we want the sensor to take the best match among the ones we've set up and compare it to the color we're interested in. So this is going to make the train drive until it sees the red color. At that point, we want to reverse course. So we can copy this block and now use a negative value to drive in reverse. Similarly, we'll now want to wait until we see the color blue. So we can just copy this whole thing and place it there, but wait for the blue tile. And now we should be able to run this program. And it works. When you run the program like this, you'll notice that the wheels reverse course right away as soon as it sees the color. At that point, the wheels are still going forward, so if you reverse, you get a lot of wheel slip, which doesn't look nice. So we can give it a bit of time to slow down in between those moves. To do that, we'll take another block such that when it sees the color, it's going to just stop first. And when it stops, we'll make it wait briefly. Uh, 
but to give it some time to stop. And we can copy these two blocks to do the same thing after we detect blue. And you can change the delay to make it look as smooth as you like. Notice that in the video it looks as if it overshoots the tile, but that's just physics. It detects the tile, and at that point it still needs some time to slow down, but it's already in the process of changing directions. Okay, this is a pretty simple program, but you can make this as creative as you like for all sorts of layouts. In this case, we're waiting for just two colors, but you can set up all sorts of logic to maybe stop when a certain color is detected or stop at a train station or even send a message to another train if you arrive at a particular point. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.